Changed my life. I was in the trap OG. Serving out white. Think about it day to day. Day and night. Last night I had a dream. And it felt so right. In the trap was serving Welcome to Hip Hop Hoops Season 3. I'm your host, Anthony Igadero. I got my co-host with me, Mr. Blackwood in the building. What up, what up, what up, what up? Today, we got a very, very special guest in the building, man. I've been trying to get this guy on the show for three years, since Season 1, and he's finally here. Timing is everything. We got Mr. Denim Brown in the building, everybody. Let's go. Mr. 111, yes. what up, my brother? Poops, everybody out there. How's everybody doing out there? Yo, we appreciate you coming by. Definitely. You know what I mean? Spending time with us, supporting us, you know? Been knowing each other for a very, very long time, man. And it's all love. So let's get into it, guys, man. Let's get into it. All right, my brother, man. I'm so happy to have you here. This is my second interview. You know what I mean? So I'm glad you came to bless, to, to provide some of that that Finch, that Jane and Finch love. Here we go that again. Jane and Finch this love. Finch stuff, man. Yo, I'm so podcast. outnumbered today. Yes, you are. We yes, got Nissan are. in the building. Hey. He's over there in the cut. Hey. Yeah. It's the coach. I'm outnumbered it's right the now. Coach right now. What's going on? We ain't trying to say too much. We ain't trying to say too much. Say too much. <laughs> but yo, my brother, you have been a champion for as much as I've known you my whole life, basically, from elementary to middle school to high school to D1 to the pros. Yo. Tell the people, like, the mindset you need in order to make that happen. Uh, I wouldn't know the mindset I needed. I just know that, you know, growing up with certain guys that I was with, you know, we just did it from the bottom. You know, we trained hard. We always played, and we loved the game, you yes. know. And, and with loving the game, it came with, came with things that we, we wanted to do, like winning, you know. Um, you know, on the court, you know, just playing ball was just around – was around the neighborhood. Everybody was playing ball. Everybody was around the neighborhood enjoying themselves. So, you know, I just took it serious after a while. You know, um, guys around me, they were they were playing ball, you know, and I just took it to another step. Uh, just made myself more focused. You know, starting from grade five, I really enjoyed the game, watching the game, watching Jordan play, growing up watching these guys who really understood the game and played at a, at a, at a, at a hard and competitive way. Yes. You know, that's a, that's a mentality that I grew up with. You know, this new school of what these kids are going through is a lot more show. Mm-hmm. You feel what I'm saying? You got like, IG, you got yeah, social so, media and, to help. And not even that, it's just a show on the court. Mm. You know, a lot of these basketball players, they're not only basketball players, but they are also role models. And, and in that, mm. it, it allows the kids to think differently. You know, and I, you know, it take not taken away from how we were growing up, but, you know, just what we were growing up was just taught that, you know, basketball is basketball. Mm-hmm. What you did on the court is is who you are and what you represented. And, right. and it's so much different now, you know, being a more rounded game, you know, on and off the court, kids are going to have to, kids are starting to realize that it takes more than just being a basketball player yes. mm-hmm. to make it in this, in this game, you know? So, you know, we had, we had things that we wanted to do as younger kids. And that was one of the aspects of basketball. One great aspect was winning. Right. A second aspect was just being the best player on the court. Right. Facts. You know, a lot of these kids nowadays just about dunking or showing off, you know, maybe <laughs> good for scoring, a, or scoring, two. A, scoring a 30, mm-hmm. you know, <laughs> quick story. Brothers just brought his son to a tournament. Yeah. Nizzle just brought his son to a tournament. And, um, he was saying that his, uh, his son was upset about not, not, not playing or not scoring. You know, and they won the tournament. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yo. They won the tournament. He but wanted he, to get his. He wants shout, his. Out, shout out Triple Balance, you know that saying? grade four team like, looking mean. So he wants his, right? So, um, you know, and that's and that's the mind frame that we had differently from these kids. Right. Mm. It was about winning and competing at a high level. Just, we just ran around the city competing against every neighborhood in the place. Bottom line. We went to Malvern. We went to Regent. Went to Rex. Falstaff. Growing everywhere. up, we went everywhere. Everywhere. Mm. And we played against everybody, and everybody knew our faces, and we was nothing about, you know, gloating or bragging. It was just, oh, we're here to play ball. We're here to compete. And well, that's where the respect came. So you, you think that, what, I mean? what you said at grade five is when you started taking it serious? Yeah, um, I was saying before that. Um, wow. Uh, we, I grew up grade two. I went to Maple Leaf. I was saying in and around grade two or grade three. 
And I, I started taking the game serious because of my aunt. Uh, she was she was a real good basketball player growing up when I was growing up in Falstaff she was playing in Falstaff and she was playing against the men so hold up you're from Falstaff from Falstaff oh Rigi okay so we can't even claim Finch then yeah, well, you can. yeah we'll you get back into we'll get back to that we'll get back to that shout out Auntie Delvine <laughs> Auntie Delvine <laughs> we, shout you out I don't want 40, 40 billion 40 billion let's go okay, I don't want to okay. I don't want to say what yeah I grew up so you guys can't get Kadugan or Denim alright here we go stop you can have Vice we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna get back to that we'll get back to that we're gonna, gonna say, we're gonna say where the claims and all the all the stomping grounds were. Um, you so you know, said grade five, you took a serious year. Grade I was, five, I, I actually I was I moved to Jane Finch. Mm. I was actually in Jane Finch in grade five. So and that was where we could say all the winning began. Mm, you know, all the basketball began in Falsa, but you know, and learning the game and watching my aunt play and seeing her dominance playing with men. You right. know what I'm saying? That that just it just gave me a different mindset about how to play the game. Right. Right. You know, just whether you're being the smaller guy, like in the David and Goliath situation, my aunt showed that yep. day after day, right, you right. know, and then she showed and improved when she came and came to the hood, came mm. to Jaina Finch. We moved to Jaina Finch. We, she started busting our ass. Yep. <laughs> yep. Fox, we were 13, 14. That, that turn around we were jumper, doing our baby. Thing and our yeah. aunt was there busting our ass. I'm like, aunt, wow. how old are you? She's like, I'm in my thirties. Mm. We're like, no, no, no. We got to get better then. If a lady, right. like, yep. kudos to my aunt, Del. So, but if a lady was showing us that, like, you guys are still not there yet. Yeah, that's crazy. You it's know, nuts. in my in my in my mind, I had a lot more work to do. Mm. And you mind you, saying? sorry to cut you off, but like you had coach, you know what I mean? You had myself, you had Adrian. Well, call him Buggy. You know what I mean? You had mm -hmm. a bunch of small guards around. You like the tallest one yeah. around all of us. So his handle, people are looking at his handle is so sick. I like to say, and maybe, you know, yeah, the coach could <laughs> attest to it. Like <laughs> we we're probably the reason why his handle was so tight, because he was so tall. And he was still dealing with us. You couldn't get the ball from Playing him. The you know what I mean? Playing with the guards yeah. for a minute. So that kind of added to, you know, the legend that we see here today, Denim yeah, Brown. I, you I, know never, what I'm I, I also never had like a bully mentality, right? Um, you know, growing up with my friends and my brothers, you know, I was always the biggest guy, but I would never show it. You know mm. what I'm saying? And same with the ball court, you know, like, uh, in, a, in a, for instance, for example, like, you know, I'm much taller than than brothers over here, Woods. I'm about a foot taller than him. But so if we're playing on the court against each other, they're gonna say, "Yo, you just going in the post. You just right, going right. in the post." You weren't doing that. Weren't wasn't yeah. doing that. Yeah, yeah. you was working on your. Guys. I was I'm like, "Yo, you can't post me up. Outside. No yeah, posting yeah, yeah. allowed. No <laughs> posting allowed. Yeah. No posting allowed." So when I'm busting your ass, I'm running by you. I'm breaking you down like yeah. a guard. There's no complaints. Yeah, yeah. Right. There's no excuses. There's yeah. no words to be said. So. And I took pride in, in guys just saying, oh, just because you're big, you're only good because you're big. Mm. I took pride in that. Yes, sir. You know, but you know only 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 bums used to say that, man. Nah. Until they got on the court nah, and they nah, felt nah, not only bums, even guys my height. <laughs> guys just always say, yo, you're so big. You're just you're only doing that because you're tall. Even guys okay, my come height. Come on here and say that. something. Even so, guys yo, my so yo, let's just get to MJ real quick. A lot of people don't know this. Although it was in the Toronto Sun a while back, we got the newspaper clippings. I hope we post it during the show. You know what I mean? When we air this. Mm -hmm. Sure will. MJ caught you at the MJ, the Michael Jordan Classic, you know, when you're in high school. Mm -hmm. And he asked you, yo, did you really score 111 points? No, he actually, how did you score 111 Oh, how? Sorry, my bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So MJ asked you that? Yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. He asked everybody at the Capital Classic a question. Like, mm. there was about, I would say, 24, 25, pretty much the same guys that went to the All-American game. Yeah, went pretty to the much. Capo yeah, Classic. Yeah. Can you name a few of those guys who were playing uh, in here? Do you remember? Um, Melo Anthony, Carmelo was playing. Mm -hmm. uh, Rashawn McCannis was playing. Um, I think, I'm pretty Rashawn sure McCannis. Raymond Felton was yeah. playing that game. Sean May, I believe. Uh, yeah, Sean, Sean May. May. Uh, I think D. Brown mm -hmm. um, went yeah. to Illinois. Illinois. Yes, yeah. they were tough. And uh, he actually has my picture with Jordan. Mm. Oh. They actually sent him my picture. So I we all got a picture that same. That same uh, question Jordan had, shook his hand, they took a photo. Mm. They sent me D. Brown. <laughs> oh, D, yeah, yeah, they yeah, sent D. Me Brown. Like, yeah, yeah. I was like, yeah, I got my Jordan, man. I'm <laughs> ready to. D. Brown. <laughs> See, D. Brown. Pick. I'm like, yo, who <laughs> shot that? I'm like, what is this, man? Like, I didn't even call him or try to get in contact with him. I just said, yo, buddy. <laughs> you know what I mean? You needed that. that was a classic picture. That was a classic. You, that. you know what man. I mean? So I, I got a shout out, Anne Marie. I got the I got the newspaper clipping. So you know, there's something I gotta okay. give to you. Like you got it. You know, it's there. At least that could be the last piece of evidence. The to show. same newspaper. That clipping. same newspaper clipping. 
um, laminated and everything. Okay. I got it. So yeah. Well, so hold on. I'm before flying. we t- before we get into that, I just want to know because you're you are a Fincher man, Falstaff, whatever. Which one? Finch. I say okay. I say Falstaff. Some might say Scar, bro. So some like, say you know, East like, you could, you could Scar. Clear it up right no, no, now. No, no. We're, not, we're not giving you to <laughs> no the east. facts. You're facts. staying west because the one eleven <laughs> happened. <laughs> because the one eleven happened. That was still. Right? I want to go because okay. I want to know. So. You're 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 from Finch, bro. Why did you go to West Hill? You you know you have Jeffries. You got you know Westview, Downsview. You know, I know, I believe Bathurst closed, what, it closed yeah, down, closed down right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, Bathurst closed down. You didn't even, you didn't even go the, the prep school route that I, where I thought you, because, you know, I went prep school. I thought you were going to take that same route. Why didn't you stay local? Why did you end up going, you know, east? Well, I'm not a, I'm not a local guy still, so, but we could go back mm. and, and show you that I'm not pretty local. Um, grade six, you know, I went to Oakdale. Right. Uh, there was a program, Boys to Men, mm-hmm. that... um. Big program. They right pretty there. much selected us from out of grade five. Okay. You know, as I got to grade six, pretty much my first week at Oakdale, I was plucked out of my class. Mm. Brought up to Mr. Davis, Mr. Skinner's class, which was a seventh mm. grade class. It was a double seventh grade class. Brought me in, put me right in the middle of the of the, of the class. <laughs> like all the the goons are in yeah. the class. Like they called all the goons <laughs> from the school. So it's a boy cement. Yeah. And they called it a hot seat. They called it a hot seat. Yeah. And they were like, they asked everybody, hey, you it's my it was my turn at the time. And they asked me about four questions, like, yo, what are you doing here? Like, what do you want to be in your life? You know what I'm saying? Just some some boy cement type of question. Right. Yeah. You know? So, you know, that program was really helpful in the, in in our building, but you know, that program went from Oakdale and it connected with Bathurst mm. and a bunch of different high schools oh, in the okay. area. Right, right. So we had a, I had a chance as a, as a grade eight student to go to Bathurst and work out and practice with Mado. Mm. You know, from the, legend. From, the, from, the, from the legend of mm. the legend Mado. Um, so that's how I pretty much made my choice to go to Bathurst. Right. You know, okay. I, didn't, I didn't go to Westview. You know, Bathurst was already recruiting. I already knew a lot about, you know, Lawrence Heights, about their about their basketball yeah. program, solid their bad, their solid, solid program solid. over solid at Lawrence one. Heights. Shout out Jungle City. So you know 100%. what I'm saying? Yeah. And 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 their connection with Bathurst. So just being a young kid, I started making my choices based on following basketball. Right. Okay. You know, Smart Westview, move. you know, Westview, my sister, is she's a few years older than me. She went to Westview. Mm. And I heard, you know, I was here and she was getting into fights like every two weeks. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, you know, that's not, that's not where I'm <laughs> trying to do. That's not the place to be. You know? So yeah. I took my, I took, I took the basketball route. So yeah. going back to um the fact that West Hill, um, Bathurst is closed and why I chose to go to West Hill right. is because it was just furthering my step, my goals. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Um, in Toronto, there's nothing here for basketball. There is now, but you know, at the times back when then. I was playing in high school, I just felt like the further I, the further away from home, the further away from the neighborhood mm. I was going, the, the better, the closer I was to achieve my goal in the right. sport. Okay. So it wasn't mm. about fearing of, of coming back home, running home. Mm. Nah, okay. I need to go. Yeah. And it didn't matter where it was, you know. Mm. Uh, so I chose to go to West Hill because Wayne was there. I played AU Wayne with Wayne. Shout out Wayne Dawkins, um, phase one. And I already had pretty much signed to UConn early like october november so the fact that i was at west hill was just for pretty much training purposes working mm. out getting better you know preparing myself he was already i was already ready yeah go. i was already okay. locked ready to go from mm. grade 12. right mm-hmm. and okay. that's kind of dope because not a lot of people i think it's totally correct me if i'm wrong is it only denim brown and jamal murray that went from like a canadian school to d1 instead of going the prep route no, you got guys. Right. Jamal so, Malore did that. So, speak, so speaking okay. of that now, um, grade 12, uh, sat down with my coach at the time. It was Saeed on the G. Uh, we sat down right in the neighborhood. Uh, it was late at night. I remember it was about like 9 or 10. I think we had finished work out. We were in his car, and he was asked, He asked me, do you want to go and play prep school in the States? I'm mm. like, nah. He's like, why? I'm like, because I want to show kids that they can make it from Canada. Right. Like, you know what nice. I'm saying? Like, it, like I never had a mentality to run or to it, it within problems. If I had any problems, you know, I always tried to take it head on. Right. You know what I'm saying? And that was one thing that if it was something in my face, then, you know, I'll face it on myself, by myself. If it's for somebody else's route to go another route, mm-hmm. you know, kudos, you want to take that route, go ahead. Go right ahead. You know, but my route is my route. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay. So well, I, I want to hear what you had to say to Jordan. I just want to get that out of the way because well, I didn't I, even know Actually, that. I didn't say nothing to Jordan. I just shrugged my shoulders, to when be he honest. You? When you asked me, I just... <laughs> it's crazy how you knew. Just, so so do you know how I found out the, about the 111? I'm going to tell you quickly. Mm. So I was at Mount Zion, and me and Jared, Jack, we shared a room. Okay. We, used, we used to stay at uh, Mount Zion. Is in Durham, North mm. Carolina, and um, there was a, we stayed in a big house. So there was like five or six rooms, and everybody had a bunk, you know. So mm-hmm. it was me and Jared, and we had curfew at like, you know, eight o'clock, I believe. And we had to go to bed yeah. before eleven. So we used to always turn on Sports Center and watch it. Mm-hmm. It was on Sports. Center? It was on Sports Center. Wow. And they were talking about Dem Brown scoring one hundred and eleven, and I was like, what the. F- uh. I called. I, I was trying to get on the phone <laughs> right away, and I was like, "Yo, this guy scored 111. Uh. This is like everybody's asking me if I know you and this yeah, and that, yeah. and it just went crazy. Uh, there was, wasn't highlights and stuff like that. Yeah, just that I remember, ticker. but it was a ticker just like the ticker. 111. Yeah. I'm crazy. like, what? The? You know what? That's I mean? how I found out. Mm. You, know? you know, I had the pastor cussing at me like, "Yo, go to bed, go to bed." <laughs> I'm like, yo, I got I to gotta take this in. You know what I mean? <laughs> Crazy. That's how I found out. Okay. All the way, North Carolina, Durham, okay. North Carolina, from Toronto. And like, it even made it in the slam. I, I remember getting no, it's a, in the slam. I remember yeah. getting that slam magazine, it's seeing slam. it. It's in the middle and of the, the slam. And the crazy thing is, if you look at that slam magazine, in his article, because he had one of the longest articles, I think only you and Junior Cadogan as Canadians. Mm. And shout out. OVO coach over here. He was in it too. Okay. You know what I mean? But in regards to long articles, you had a pretty long article. Yeah, and his, in his that, could do, on you know, the next page, it. like if you open the magazine, one side is Denim Brown, you see a little picture of Candace Parker, a young Candace Parker, mm-hmm. and you see a little picture of LeBron James. Young boy mm-hmm. LeBron. You know what I mean? It's kind of crazy mm-hmm. now that we're older, yeah. looking at that, it's like you see Denim Brown, Ooh, LeBron James, right yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Candace you Parker. Legends, that was dope. Yeah. Were, were you the first one in the slam? The first Canadian? I think Olu. Family or Olu. Oval. Oval. I know Olu family, family yeah. team was the first yeah. Canadian to play in the McDonald's All-American games. I wasn't Definitely. sure about Slam. Oh, he was the very question. first yeah. All-American. No, there was a... I'm not sure if you, if you were the first Canadian to be in the Slam. I'm not sure about that. But I know Olu was the yeah, first. That is, that's a good question. Yes. I don't, I'm not sure yeah. if Olu was in was in the Slam. Okay. Mm-hmm. I know he was the first McDonald's All-American. I'm going to see him tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. Ask him that. Okay. You know okay, what I mean? Yeah, I, I would yeah, like yeah, to know yeah. about okay. that. Yeah, that's a good fun fact. So, <laughs> so when you scored this 111, man, this yeah. is so legendary. Hold up. Remember, in 32 minutes, guys. 32. You know what? Some no, people can't even score 111 but, points but, in 32 minutes runtime by themselves. Exactly. Having so, a band so grab the rebound. this is what makes me sick when people talk about, you know, when people get buckets like this, right? Guys will say, well, he wasn't playing against nobody. Listen, <laughs> if I was out there against <laughs> babies, yeah. I got to make three. How much three did you make? Like, eleven. Uh, you got to make the shot. Yeah. You so make it. regardless of who you're playing against, you got to make shots. Facts. You know what I mean? Facts. So when people say, oh, he wasn't playing against nobody. Like, why Why even talk like that? Like, do you, if you know basketball, you know you got to make shots. You got to. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So when you when you were scoring that 111, like, like, what was the mindset? Like, what? What, what was that the objective? Like, I'm going to get 100 yeah. today? It was it was predetermined. Um. First, my coach, um, Marv Spencer. At shout out to Marv. Yeah, Marv. Shout out to Marv. He's in the building. <laughs> Not in the building right now, but yeah. Yeah. Um, he had told me, uh, I think I would say back in October, mm-hmm. and it happened about in March. He had told me back in October when the season first started, I want you to score 100 points this year. Mm-hmm. Right. You know what I'm saying? And that's all he was preaching. He's like, yo, D. Brown, I need 100. I'll see him in the hallway at West Hill. Yo, D Brown, you got that hundred for me? And this is still like October, <laughs> early November. <laughs> season didn't even start. He's like, yo, D Brown, what about that hundred? I'm like, all right. Are you man. laughing at him? Like, this I'm guy's crazy? Not even laughing. No smirk, nothing. <laughs> not a smirk on my face. Just walking by like, mm-hmm. don't watch nothing, brothers. I got you, fam. So, <laughs> so I sat down with another, um, with another uh, brothers at the time of mine in November. You know, we were sitting in the hood and I had told him, yo, I'm going to score 100 this year. And that was about four months before it happened. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So the inception had been planted and then I planted for myself. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Take so me through that game, though. I didn't just, I just know. Like, uh, like, yo, did you come into the game like saying I got to get, you know, five nah, layups, it wasn't, it wasn't three threes, I don't, like I don't a quarter? Count, I don't count the game okay. like that. I, I would have tried to count. I stuff. just went. Cause I you think know you know what I think I think Dewan Wagner scored a hundred. I think so. And then he scored one hundred eleven. Yeah, yeah. You're right. and I was like, yeah, a kid you're from right. Texas scored one hundred 
102 or 101. Was he, was, that was high the school same too, week, right? Within the same week. Yeah, that's what I'm yeah. saying. It was a bunch yeah, of, well, three of them bunch within of the same couple of weeks. Yo, who got that footage, man? Marv got that um, footage? No, a kid. One kid got we gotta that, get footage. that footage. Yeah, I know. Gotta, bro. Because I seen the Wani. The I, I Wani think he has hunted. it. You seen it? <laughs> yeah, I seen the Wani hunter. Okay. I have, Dung's a couple, crazy. I have a couple clips on it. On no, we gotta get the whole the clip. Whole we gotta post yeah. it on. We gotta post it on YouTube Here or something. We gotta post we it. We got to. I gotta Hip-hop try. Hip hop moves, baby. I gotta, I gotta find it. We Come gotta on, get man. that Go footage. Come on, man. That That's it. the he mission. Said he got for it next couple of weeks. <laughs> Dude said he got it though. I don't got it. You know so what, what was your mindset, man? Like, uh, like, like, take us through this game, man. One hundred and eleven well, points. I had, I had some good teammates. Uh, they passed me the ball. They passed me the ball. If they if they had scored, they got subbed out. <laughs> so I had some pretty good teammates. They, they played the game pretty good. Yeah, um, I love it. But I, 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 made, it. I, I made it look good for them as well. Yeah, you know, uh, a lot of kids came out. You know, I, I barely missed. I didn't miss a lot, especially in the second half. This is what mm. you got to make the shots. Yeah, like. I missed. Um, I don't think I made. I made one or two threes in the first half, mm. you know, and then. And I went to Dawkins. I'm like, yo, you know, what's going on? What do you think? He's like, yo, I think you need to get more into your shot. Like, just spend a little more. Mm-hmm. I think I had about 10 threes in the second half. And the, the highest point um, quarter I had was a 36-point quarter. Shit. God. So, in eight minutes, guys. Good quarter. 36 yeah. in eight freaking minutes. So I, only Stop had, time. I think I only had about 10 free throws, 11 threes. And mm. the rest were twos, wow. layups. Some double team guys were double teaming me. <laughs> Didn't was, matter. No, it didn't matter. There was a couple guys my height. Yeah, not everybody was Woods' height. A couple guys right. your height, my height. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? From R.H. Mm. King. Mm. R.H. Yeah. King, man. Just, Shout uh, you all out, man. Another kid on my team actually <laughs> had 30. 30. Really? Piece. Yeah, he had a 30 piece. Damn. Roderick. Roderick. Roderick hey. Roderick. So you could have took his 30. So everybody got their average. I probably could have took his 30 piece Damn. too. And then we scored 200. Saying? Like, and I'm looking at like, I'm training <laughs> high school kids right now. Yeah. And I'm like, like, I never got tired in high school. I don't like, I like, yeah. you gotta, yo, honestly, never got tired. after 50, 50, I believe 57 was the most I scored in a game. And when I went home, I, I didn't even take a shower. I went straight to sleep. I was bust. Sex. So to, to get okay. 111, like yeah, conditioning got to be crazy. Got to be crazy, man. It got to be crazy. Yeah, man. <laughs> Shit. Thirty six was my game high in high school, and you scored that in a flipping quarter. Yeah. That's nuts. That's nuts. Wow, a hundred and eleven in a game, people. Take so, that in. So after you did that, now, all right, you left your, you know, your your doo stain in your white box there on West Hill. Said I'm out. <laughs> I'm going to UConn. <laughs> That sounds so nasty. It, Go ahead, uh, you know what I mean. Sometimes ahead, you wear white ahead. boxers and shit happens. <laughs> Go ahead. No pun intended. That's right? not finished up. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> but, but why did you choose UConn? Uh, was that the best college option at the time? And I, I, it was crazy because UConn is the best school in the country at that time. So when you chose them, like you didn't think about like damn, got yeah, Ben a, Gordon coming between a rock and a hard place. Like nah, I ain't doing that. I'm going <laughs> and, somewhere else. And to mind get you, <laughs> off record. Like, you used to show me, like, letters yeah. mm-hmm. for days. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? I'm like, this is what it looks like to see an actual Division One school, a box mm-hmm. of just letters. Right. Of in- man's interested in my man's right here. So I was just like, <clears throat> off of that alone, you, you have to get motivated and super proud and happy. You know what I mean? But tell them why you chose UConn. Um, like, Naturally, I only had a few schools I naturally wanted to go to. I loved, I liked UConn because when I was watching college ball, I I, I watched Ray Allen. Mm. Sick, you know what I'm saying. Mm. I, I I liked the way Ray Allen played. He was a pure shooter, you know, and that's something that I wanted to be. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Well, not just a pure shooter, but a, a, a you dunk on like, you too now. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. So 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 in watching college ball, like watching like you know in the NBA version, Jordan would be like the ultimate. NBA guy for me and I, mm. I think Ray Allen at his time and any time even now like Ray Allen was one of the best college players ever 100% you know 100% what I'm saying? In, in his career so at his time he kind of sparked more interest you know what I'm saying watching Ray Allen it sparked more interest into into the game and and how much more you could how much more better you could get so mm. I just really like UConn mm. and um like you know I, I'm pretty ignorant so you know mm. liking UConn there were certain things that I didn't like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I'm a, I'm a, I'm a hard headed dude. Like I'm a tough headed individual. So like, it's like, it's you or me. Right. And okay. it's me. Mm. You got to have that mentality. You got to have, you gotta dog, have that you know mentality going so, to UConn and any school so, that's like that, man. So mm-hmm. that's how I look today. Even, you know, you mentioned a lot of, you know, there was about, I think seven or eight NBA guys that Definitely. got drafted in my four years that, yep. that were at UConn. But, 
you know, I felt like I had a big part to do with that. You know, mm -hmm. I don't I don't say much about, you know, things that happen at UConn and how much success UConn has had while I was there. But, you know, a lot of a lot of pros came through out there, you know, kind of kind of made Calhoun's job a lot easier for him. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you guys like, won a lot of games. He, he, toned, lot down, of he games. toned down a lot in my four years. My, nah. my mm -hmm. first year at UConn was three and a half hour practices, hour in Jeez. the hour weight room. Mm. And then we had our meals and we might have um, study hall after that. So by the time I got home, it was about 8, 30, 9 o'clock, straight nap, mm -hmm. straight bedtime. Mm -hmm. I wasn't right. even looking up. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? Straight <laughs> shit, shower, shave, bed. You know what I'm saying? So and right back at it, 9 o'clock, 9 o'clock um, study, 9 o'clock class. So, you know, those, those things built, you know, mm. those things built me, you know. Brothers them always came down and came down and checked me and I always had a like a frown on my face. Yeah. They were yeah. like they were like, Yo, D Brown, you good? <laughs> <laughs> Does it look like I'm good, bro? <laughs> like I'm trying to handle, bro. <laughs> like, <yo. laughs> I'm trying to handle right now, man. You feel me? Without 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 you know, without even breaking a sweat on it. You know, a lot of guys transfer, a lot of guys run. Right. You know, I know a lot of eyes were on me growing up. You know, so for, for a lot of people see, you know, denim transfer from UConn would be like a stain. Yeah. A stain in Canadian basketball, a stain in Toronto's legacy. Right. Like denim left UConn, why? Right. Mm. What's going on? Yeah. Nah, D Brown ain't soft like that, fam. D Brown pushed through the whole thing. All right. So if D Brown pushed through the whole thing, <laughs> might you as well me. Bottom line. Right. You see what I'm saying? Bottom line. And you had, you had an somebody amazing that career, they could go man. back to and say that this man pushed through something like that. Bottom line. So why am I to run? I remember watching the you know madness and hearing the announcer when you, uh, I think you guys were playing with Robert Mason. Mm -hmm. And you got the the budget the beat to go to. Overtime, yeah. And what could Brown do for you? You know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? I think that was, I think that line right there kind of summarized. Right. You know what I mean? Your your legacy mm -hmm. on the UConn like, program. Is there something that this guy hasn't done for you guys? Like, what Come else on. do you guys what want? What has guys Brown done count? for you, man? Mm -hmm. Yo, you That's scored good. you scored over a thousand points at, at UConn in your career. And that's, that's crazy. Like, you scored over a thousand points. <laughs> I wanted the best programs mm. <laughs> I mean, okay. in the world. Well, like I said, right? what could Brown do for you, man? Over a thousand Come points. On. And there you have this infamous picture um, where, you're, where you have and you're going like this and you're yeah. showing all the rings all the on rings. your finger. Yes. Mm. What were, could you remember those rings? Because you won the national, how, much, how much national championships one. did you win? One? one. one. Against uh, Georgia Tech. Georgia it was Tech. unfair. I watched it. No, I was actually you know in UConn. Why, you know why it wasn't unfair? So I, I'll tell you why it wasn't unfair, though, brother. The score because, didn't look that way. No, no, no. Hold on, though. We played Georgia Tech. Now, I don't know if a lot of people know this. We played Georgia Tech the same year. Right. In the Big East tournament. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe uh, not the Big East tournament. It was uh, like an early bird classic tournament in uh, Madison in uh, New York in the Garden. The beat you guys. They dubbed us. Mm. They had that, the dude had the hops. He was. Maham uh, uh, yep, yep, yep. You know what I'm talking yep, about? Yep, They Muhammad. had uh, Will Bynum. They had Jerry Jack. Jerry Big Jack. Head, yep. Mm -hmm. It was tough. You know what I'm saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. But they when you guys had us. him in the championship, no, but it that's was just why. Like, that's geez, why. You guys, yeah. were, you guys were vexed. <laughs> <laughs> they were like perfect. Yeah, the yep. ball came back to slaughter. Yeah. <laughs> what are you guys making laps around here, bro? Bottom line, those making payback games are the best bro. games, man. Don't worry, we, we got a shoehorn for you, boys. <laughs> <laughs> what a perfect sure. place and time to beat right. them in the Facts. national championship game. Destroy that line. whole, destroy Crazy. that whole organization, that whole program. Probably never seen Georgia Tech after that. They're like, bye. <laughs> <laughs> they ain't make no noise ever since that, <laughs> though. I ain't gonna lie. Like, the beat definitely ain't stinging. Man. Oh, my definitely God. Definitely not stinging. Mm -mm. You know what I mean? So four years at UConn, man, you score over 1,000. You won a national championship. How many Big East titles did you guys win? Several. Uh, I every say. year. I think every year we have a Big East title. So four years, yeah, you won. Yeah. You got four Big East <laughs> <laughs> hey yo, listen. That's when the Big East was the real Big East at that time, and that's like, well, that's why I'm the saying, real Big East. That's Villanova, what I'm saying. The man Georgetown, Denim like, Brown, the real man, Big East. The man Denim Brown is a winner. He just knows how to win, bro. So you yeah, know what I mean? Is, and um, I always, I always said that. So I, I think the first year we won. One of the years doesn't have the Big East tournament in it, mm. or no, one of the years doesn't have the Big East, but it, we won the Big East tournament, and that's in a garden. I think the last year. And you guys are playing in the garden every yeah, year. Yeah, Big East yeah. tournament. That's crazy. Big East tournament. Mm -hmm. After four years, you score over a thousand. You know, you got several Big East tournament champions. You got the national title under your belt. Now, 
How are you preparing? You know, you're going to the league. What's that process? It was slow. Slow? Yeah. It was a, it was a waiting game. You know, I, I waited maybe a month afterwards to, you know, get an agent. You know, mm-hmm. it was maybe up until April or May. You know, and then once I got my agent, I did a lot of, I did a lot of workouts. I worked out for about uh, 10 to 12 teams, maybe even more. Right. You know, in that process, you know, it was, it was starting to get enjoyable. You know, really? there was no school. You were actually on the road. I'm actually on the road playing ball. <laughs> Life is more comfy. Right. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, getting drafted 40 by Seattle, you know, I, I thought it was a knot, but I kind of understood on where the game was going mm-hmm. just more than the basketball game, but just as a business, mm-hmm. you know, and, and my, and the fact that I didn't spend a lot more time with Calhoun and really getting getting to know him and him getting to know me so he can talk on my behalf. Right. I think that kind of that kind of stopped or it kind of reason why my 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 number with my draft number was raised a little bit higher, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. So do you is there any regrets in nah, regards no to regrets. talking? No regrets. Building that rapport, I no guess regrets. off the court with Calhoun? Uh oh, with Calhoun? Yeah, with Calhoun. Yeah, I don't I don't I don't like I don't regret not talking. To I guess regret's or, a strong word. Yeah, but I don't like, like I don't I don't like um have any animosity towards coach. Okay. Or um or regret doing anything different. Okay. Because even after that, I think I was pretty much the same after that. Everywhere else, I, I didn't. So it was. <laughs> <laughs> so it was like it was still the same. Like, yeah, line. like, and you know, it's it's just a shame that you know my process was more of a learning process than mm-hmm. actually a, a life process and actually living the life of an nba player and but more of learning right. as an individual about steps and different ways to to get through life and things might be not my way but still not crying about it still pushing through and going through with things right yes sir mm-hmm. you know a lot of people still say yo d bro you you regret not making me like mm, didn't make league still okay you know what right. i'm saying it's still a lot to learn still a lot been done Yes, a whole lot's been done. Well, absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, so, so with the Seattle, the whole Seattle thing, right? When you get drafted, I I believe the Raptors had the first pick. Was it the first pick in the second round they had? First first or second pick? No, they had the 29th pick and then they had. Oh yeah, they like the thirty third or something. Yeah. Right. It was an early, it was an early yeah. second early round, second and they and they end up picking PJ Tucker. Did Shout you, out PJ you, Tucker, but boy, did you nah. feel that you were you like this is my slot? Like it makes sense. Um, because I thought yeah. it made sense. Well, I, I thought it made sense even at the time. Did you work out for the Raptors? Yeah, I worked out for the Raptors. Okay. Um, I had my hands I up like worked out for <laughs> out a couple of times for the Raptors, and, and that's why yeah. that's why we all thought it was it was a done deal. Straight up. You know, that's just how the business is. That's mm. that's those are the games that I've learned. You know what right. I'm saying? Those are the processes that I've learned. You know, just keep honing what you're doing, honing your craft, yeah. you know, on on and off the court. Mm. So did, did so did you go did you go overseas after that or did you play did you play I played, in the G I played in the D League. Yeah, I played in the G League. Okay, for a full it was the D League yeah. at that time. It, yeah, I played in the and, and you were you destroyed. You were destroyed. Yo, was, listen, man. My man was <laughs> destroying was, the, yeah. yo, <laughs> you, you know what used to cheese me? And I guess the NBA is a business. I would never understand it outside looking in. But I was like, my man is dominating MVP candidate yeah, for was, the D League. I was supposed to get MVP that first year. In the showcase, year, all yeah. that, and not one NBA call up. Mm-hmm. What would you that used to like first year in the D League? Cheese me, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. I watch some games and yeah. I'm just like, well, yeah. You shouldn't be here. Shouldn't. No. <laughs> you shouldn't be you know here. I mean, not at one NBA call up. Like not one call up. Yeah. Like what was what was the feeling like? Uh, like I said, you know, I'm I'm pretty patient with things. Oh, you know, I'm, I'm I'm willing to work through things, and I'm willing to just stay with things. Mm-hmm. You know, until I realize that it's too late, and then I'll just walk off and go about my business. And when I do, I'll never come back. So. Mm-hmm. So I, I waited and I waited. I played the whole year. You know, I didn't pout, grunt, go to the coach, go to the call the GM or the commissioner and say, yo, how come I getting a call up? Like guys feel like they're obligated that to do That sense of entitlement, now. right? Mm-hmm. Like, you guys know would saying? do that. Guys, uh, definitely. Okay. Mm-hmm. Calling their coach. Yo, coach, yep. I'm averaging 20. What's going on? Mm. So I, about two weeks before the season ended, you know, I had told my coach, you know, I have a chance to go to Turkey for, for a couple of months. And um, the commissioner said, you shouldn't leave. You're going to get MVP. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> like, bro, 
what that got to do with me? You know what I'm saying? So, you, I gave you, I gave you eight, seven, eight months. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And you want to give me a title, man? I didn't get a call up. I've been doing my work, so I ended up going to Turkey that year. And Big then, leagues, yeah. I ended Big up going leagues. to Turkey for a couple months, and then uh, I think I came back to D League few years after that. You know, mm-hmm. I spent a couple of years back in the D League playing with North Dakota, playing with Iowa. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, that first year I played with Tulsa. Mm. So I, I did a couple of years stints in the D League as well. What What would you tell, like, these new cats? Like, you know, I know a few of them, Lindell Wigginton. You know, he's in the G League right now. What would you tell a guy like that who, you know, you already been through that process? Like, what kind of advice would you give him? Go to Europe. Go to Europe. <laughs> Go to yeah. Europe. You know what is crazy? I'll never forget this, man. Um, Coach Cheney for Temple. Yeah, um, rest in peace. He was, he was, uh, I was talking to him uh, when I was in high school and he told me, listen, man, never, never leave that money on the table. Mm. Like, yeah. if Europe is going to pay you millions, Facts. don't, don't stay over here Facts. hoping and wishing, go get the mm-hmm, money. Mm-hmm. It was crazy. He was because talking. Because it's that money that mm-hmm. attracts the NBA teams yep. to you. Right. The and he would always tell Lynn Greer that. Mm-hmm. Is the more that they'll want you. The more that they'll want yep. you. Because the bag is what causes the respect. Wow, you know what I'm saying yes, wild, and, and 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 that's the math that guys are getting now, right? Yeah, yeah. you don't even have to be too high skill, but if a team is 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 worth to pay you two million, mm-hmm. then the NBA will look. Why are they? We got to right. look on why they're paying this guy right two million because mm-hmm. they don't want to look like the idiots paying you, taking you from a team that's paying you three thousand. They better give the guy better. I'm <laughs> giving the guy the look that's two million. Like right. we don't want to look like dummies paying right. guy three thousand. He ain't right. gonna get shit. <laughs> you better off look like idiots paying that man two million. At least we're gonna say, yo, he he was worth two million somewhere else. <laughs> it's not our fault, right? We got him from over there. He was worth two mil. <laughs> so, hmm. so yo, oh my god. So let's 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 fast forward to the present, right? Okay. So you're currently coaching at Royal Crown, right? Was coaching always in an an eventual goal of yours? Um. To get back in the game, and, and and that's the way I look at it, to get back in the game, I probably would have waited for my son mm. if he wanted to get back in the game. But um, feel like it's calling me back. So, you know, whether it's in coaching or training, you know, it's just basketball is still in the blood. You know what I'm saying? Mm, and right. it's still, even when I'm in the court in the high school, I'm still working out. I'm still getting my shots so. I'm like it's just it's just getting rougher and rougher as the day goes. <laughs> I don't know. I'm telling you. I don't know how you it's can do it, man. Rougher and rougher, man. Your so, body's not sore. Yeah, sore? No, hell, <laughs> sore, <Holy. laughs> mushy. No, cool no, not no, no, no. Okay, but um, yeah. So it's it's just a process, and it and it, and the hardest part is is still, you know, trying to differentiate from myself as a player. And, and and getting into the scope of coaching, mm. you know what I'm saying? It's it's two different lenses, and I'm noticing that now. You know that that kids are not gonna want me beside them; they're gonna want me behind them. Right? You know what I'm saying? And 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 that's that's a different scope that I'm trying to learn right now. But it, it, it's in the scope because you know I've always been looking out for people. You know what I'm saying? I've always been I've been behind people. So definitely, you know, I think it's a double because of my personality and you know how I am as a person, helping out others. And it, and it's transferable in the game of basketball. You know what I'm saying? If, mm-hmm. if we had, I look at it like if I had a facility like where I'm coaching at Royal Crown right now, you know, I would I would be an NBA player regardless <laughs> of where I went, who was in my way. Things what a lot politi- different now. Yes, <laughs> <man>. <laughs> Things a lot different now. Like, I wouldn't shout be shout asking Royal nobody Crown, nothing. Yeah. Shout <laughs> out to Pat, like, man, Royal Crown. You know, so they it, it's it's and, and and not just Royal Crown. I know there's a lot of organizations mm-hmm. out there. You got Crestwood who, well. who are who are building themselves more like, you know, as a as a as a self sustaining organization. Mm-hmm. You know, it's in the in the fact that they don't have to leave to get kids from in their facility, in their gym to the NBA. They right. don't have to leave the building, mm. you know, and, and that's the part that, you know, we were doing, Facts. you know what I'm saying? We were doing that whole way back when jumping from gym to gym, yep. you know what I'm saying? And and the game is, is a lot tighter now, more serious, more disciplined, you know what I'm saying? So if kids, if kids continue to have that discipline that we had back in the day, 
and that love for the game, then th- th- it's gonna be so much easier. Facts. Facts. You know, because of how much how much roads we had to walk, how much how much buses we had to take, how much kilometers we had to drive. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Just to hit a gym, go from a gym to a weight. There was never a such thing called a weight room, but just to go from like playing a runs to a practice, mm-hmm. it's two different ends of the city. Yes, sir. Facts. Yeah. So okay. you got your first game coming up on Wednesday. I believe you guys play against Lincoln Prep. How how do you feel about that, man? I feel okay. Yeah. Um, Are the boys ready? I'm not going to talk too much about Royal Crown. <laughs> okay. okay. You know, I'm just going to keep that goal slight. Yeah. Okay. But uh, they are ready. You know, they're they're pretty good. They're pretty talented Cooper guys. Okay. And mm. females. And, All right. Uh, I, I think they'll do big things this year. Right. Yeah, they're going to be pretty scary, man. Definitely be watching. Definitely be watching. I want to ask a it question. It reminds me of my UConn team. Ooh. What are you saying? What are you saying right now? They remind me. What are you saying right now? What are you saying? They remind me of my old two to old six UConn squads, oh. man. But like, what are you saying yeah, right now? Like, you got some Ben Gordons on there? No, nah, not nah, yeah. no BGs. <laughs> <laughs> they're they're a pretty good group of high school kids. Wow. They, they got some talent. And they got the head on their shoulder. Yeah, then they, they got some mentors, yeah, man. Their coaches, good, yeah. their coaches are, are are made men in the basketball. You got on the community. roster, uh, Olu, you know Superman Johnson. Yes, yeah. nice mm-hmm. staff, nice staff. Yeah, so you're also coaching girls as X, well. X, Chris Boys, X, well. come on okay. now. Yeah, that's big. Man. First that's time, big. that's a first time thing. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, dealing with girls. Okay, but. listen, man. I appreciate you tapping in with us, man. Oh, hold up, hold up. I know you got you got places to go, and I know you guys got to go, but yo. The best area that produces the best basketball players. What area produces? We, we don't have enough time to go into bas- this. Just, just so a one word answer. Where no. I, Two where words. Where are you from? <laughs> no. <laughs> you know, but what's what's the argument to that though? There's no. There, Ask listen, this guy. No, no. Listen, I, 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 East when End. I, when I say no, West End obviously okay. produces the best players, but you know we want to get more specific. Specific, and you know, um, you know, Western Road and Black Creek, Humber Boulevard. That's where I'm from. You know what I mean? But I, I gained my skills in Malton. You know what I mean? Okay. So, you know, Malton, we got some we got some beasts, you know? Like, I'm going to keep it 100. You know, we got Bobby, Bobby Allen, Allen. We got myself. OG, we got Jerome Robinson. Got yeah. Jerome you know Robinson. what I mean? We got some yeah. monsters. So, you know, my little area, I know I can compete with a lot of guys as far as, you know, the amount of players that we produce and send across that border. You know what I mean? Not the guys that just played locally and, you know what I mean, did their thing here. So, we always have this conversation, me and him. Okay. Which area produces the best ballers in the city? And I'm, 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 I'm going hard with my my place, man, Malton. Man. So, and I'm with you. Can't, stick, can't, you I'm can't sticking claim with Finch. Jaden Finch. You, you, you're not from Finch. You're from Falstaff. So he's saying I'm you gotta glad, be born. I'm glad with, he said that. Falstaff? Oh, it's, it's where you're born. He's trying to. I, I don't know. Are that's what he's saying. No, I was born. I was born in Western Rhode Island. He's one twenty one Humber Boulevard Malton, or one fifteen yeah, Humber, Humber Boulevard. So, so I, 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 I moved. Uh-huh. I moved to the hood when I was like ten years old. Okay, give me, give me, give me a quick, give me a quick five. Paul Staff has no ball players. Gucci, shout out to my guy. Gucci. Gucci. <laughs> Yo. Gucci, I love you, brother. Give me- <laughs> Yo, listen. Hold on, hold on. Yo, can you nice. edit? You can nice. edit on this, right? He, he can- yeah, all right. Cool. All nice. Right. Nice. <laughs> nice. No, no, hold on. Hold on. Hold so on. We can act dumb now, right? <laughs> hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I need give me give me give me if you're going to work, give me your five from Finch. Let me let me hear the top top five guys from Finch that you would say. Wow. Top five from Finch. Mm-hmm. Cause you know, cause you know when when there was a list going on about the best Toronto high I school see. players to ever come out of Toronto, period. Your name was on there. Okay, like you were, you were. I believe you were number four. You know, they had okay. Bill, uh, they had uh, Bobby Allen and Phil Dixon. You know, switching, and then they had uh, Leo Rollins, Jamal McGlory, and yourself. Okay. You that's know what right. I mean? that's that's some pretty heavy. That's 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 tough company okay. right there. So, coming out of Finch, what, what would you say? Give me give me five quickly. Mm. Kadugan. JR. Uh, He's from Wilner, but go ahead. Oh, here this guy. <laughs> <laughs> from Wilner, but go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> when? I'm just, I'm just saying, I, I went. To, I, I did go to the Rockcliffe with Curlon and, you know, okay, Jane and go. Alliance right there. So, so, I, so. <laughs> well, go ahead. We got take, JR. Take, Yo, take honest, JR. Honestly, take this is the toughest question you've asked me all night. So I'm going <laughs> to, I don't have an answer for this one, brother. We'll come back to this right? one. We'll, we'll come, come back, back to this one. one. You know what I mean? Give but me a part two for that one. I'll send you an email. We'll come back to this one. We'll come back yeah. to this one. 
Yo, listen, brother. I appreciate you coming by. Definitely. You know what I mean? Spending your time with us on a Sunday, man. It's all love, brother. You know, supporting hip hop hoops. You know what I mean? My 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 new co-host right here. Like I said, we've been trying for three years to get you on. This is legendary. I can't wait to, you know, put this out, man. This is gonna be big for the city, man. Huge this is for absolutely city. for the culture right here. Basketball we got the first community. interview. This is the first interview. So I, I thought, want everybody I to thought know. By that was. No, no, I'm talking for you. Oh, for me. For you. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> So, you know, yeah, yeah, this is the is first too. interview for you, man. So I'm, I'm happy, man. We got it. Hip Hop Hoops season three. You know what I mean? Check us out every Monday. Me and my boy Woods. Here. You know what I mean? We, we're on YouTube, man. Like, subscribe, you know, share comments. Just support us, man. Tell a friend know? to tell a friend, man. Support yeah, us, man. man. We're Hip Hop Meets Hoops, man. And we are out of here. Let's go. Serving out what? Last night I had a dream, and it felt so right. Let's go.